Hello. In our last video, we had looked at sexual offence crimes in South Africa, and this should be where we ended off. Today, we will look at another crime category called crimes detected as a result of police action, which is another way of saying police intervention. Let's begin. Let's just have or let's create a visual an overview of a visual that we will be using for the entire uh, time frame of data. This is all we're going to do. We're going to create our title, we'll pass in an X label, a Y label, and then we will create our bar chart. We know that we want it only for one financial year, 2011-2012. We also know the crime category is only going to be crimes detected as a result of police intervention. Here's a variable up here. And then we're going to grab the geography associated with it. This will give us all of the unique geographies plus ZA being the aggregate of all the other geographies. We will then say the height of each bar will be the financial year 2011-2012, where the crime category is the one we passed earlier, so right here. I need to sneeze. bless me and then we're going to grab the count of those geographies we'll finally pass a color and we will use c for cyan and then we will run the dot show method and when we do this we get the crimes detected as a result of police action in the nine provinces in south africa and south africa itself for the financial year 2011 2012 obviously the first thing we can see or the first plot we see is for the za column Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly large, over 250,000 crimes detected as a result of police action. But again, the ZA column is the aggregate of all other nine provinces. If we turn our attention more to the right, we notice Western Cape being the most large plot, which clearly indicates that the Western Cape police force tends to be the most dynamic as compared to its other fellow provinces. What's also weird is, we notice that the total value for ZA is over 250,000. Let's just look at the sum here. We would have about 90, 60, 50. Okay, makes sense. Now, we'll do the entire plot again, so we'll create this plot again, but this time for all the years in our financial, all the years in our time frame. So, we will create a variable called years, crime incidents raw df, we'll grab the dot financial year column and we'll make grab only where it's unique. We'll then loop over the years and filter data is equal to the raw data frame only where the financial year is equal to a year in the years variable. And we only want it where the crime category is crimes detected as a result of police action. We'll then create our bar chart using this very simple method right here. And we'll set our title, X label, Y label, and then we'll run the dot show method. And here is what we get. This is for the financial year 2011, 2012, then 2012, 2013, and then 2013, 2014, 2014. 2015, 2015, 2016, 2016, 2017, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21, 20, 21, 22, and finally 22, 23. Now, let us go back to 2021, 2022. Look at this. Crimes detected as a result of police action in the nine provinces in South Africa and South Africa itself for the financial year 2021-2022. We have already made certain that the ZA column is the aggregate of all nine provinces. If that's the case, why is it that the Eastern Cape bar and the ZA bar are practically the same? If it were true that ZA was an aggregate of all other nine provinces, shouldn't the ZA bar be much larger? Just by definition. But in reality, look at this. 
they are almost the same. Here we go. So if I grab the raw data frame, and then I grab the geography is in Eastern Cape or ZA, only for the financial year 2021, 2022, and the crime category is in the crime category, I get the following. The exact same answer. So uh, row 760, row 761, ZA, EC, the same crime category, same year, and the same count. This must be a data entry error. Either one of them is true, neither of them are true. Well, let me put it this way. The only thing we can say is that both are not true. One of these statements are false. And there's no way for us to know, but I'll be more leaning towards Eastern Cape seeing a almost a 10 times increase in crimes detected as a result of police action in one year. So I would have seen the EC column right here. Something is wrong. Now, we need to change this value. This 204,990, we need to change that value. And we can change it. If we grab the financial year 2021, 2022, where the geography is not ZA, in the crime category, and then we do the dot count dot sum, we get this value. And then, if we run this function, this would make the appropriate changes, assuming that Eastern Cape did not see such a large increase in the respective crime category. We can try searching the web, but the issue in that approach is how valid is the data. <laughs> but the reason why I am not going to change anything is because I do not know. So instead, for now, I will just elect to ignore this column. Here we have analysis of crime detected by police in South Africa for the years 2011, 2012 to 2022, 2023. Again, we will use the previous format of pre-COVID, intra-COVID, and post-COVID. Pre-COVID, the Western Cape appears to have the most proactive policing force, clearly indicated by the greatest uh, size bar chart all along. Look at this. One time Kauteng's over it, but then Western Cape, Western Cape. Uh, Western Cape, Kauteng, Western Cape back, Western Cape, Western Cape. Western Cape and Western Cape. Only post and intra COVID we see a difference. So again, the second and third most productive police enforced belongs to Gauteng and Kwazulu Hotel. Northern Cape very interestingly seems to have the least productive police enforced, which is weird. We know from early analysis that Northern Cape has the lowest count of sexual offenses. And if we go further back to the line plots, we notice that Northern Cape seems to have the lowest crime count in practically all crime categories. Yet, it has the lowest number of crimes detected by police, which could be due to a variety of reasons. Less crime obviously requires less active policing. Victims and community members are actually actively reporting crimes. Police may be lacking funding, general resources. Now, here's the thing. Is the Northern Cape crime count so low because crime is not being reported? Hard to know. Intra-COVID, same as prior analysis. Post-COVID, we notice an error. This makes our post-COVID analysis a little difficult to make. Using prior data to make the educated guess that crime detected by police would have increased. <laughs> we'll then ignore all of this, and here's the thing. I want to determine what trend the data presents. A downtrend? Not a goof or an uptrend. Bad. This should be. Yeah. So a downtrend would be good. And an uptrend would be bad. The geography ZA is the aggregate sum of all provinces for a given year. If I sum the entries of Count for South Africa for a given year, I would have the total crimes committed for that year regardless of crime category. So using that logic, I come down here, I alter my figure size, I rotate my x values, I pass an x label, a y label, and a title. I then use Seaborn to create a bar plot, where x will be my years, y is my total crime count per financial year, and hue is here years. And this is what we get. This is South Africa crime over the years. Uh, Cool, 
quite hard to read, especially because the y-axis seems to be using exponential format, which is not something we want. So we come down here, we'll import dot ticker for matplotlib. We will again alter our figure size. We will use our bar plot, but then we will do a little alteration. We will change our x tick labels, our x label, our y label, our title. We will then format our y axis labels. We will then show the function. As for as a warning, don't worry, not important. And this is much better. We now see South Africa crime over the years. 2011, 2012, uh, practically over 2 million counts of crime, with the highest being for the financial year 2014, 2015. Should be this plot right here, appears to be the largest. But what's great is we do see a downtrend, especially post COVID. Is that good? Is it bad? Who knows? Here it is. So we'll keep this as simple as possible. We noticed an early uptrend signified by the first three bar plots. Notice here, this is an uptrend. Data went up. Not good. The period beginning 2014 2015 and ending 2019 2020 shows a downtrend indicating a decrease in crime. So, right here, 2014 2015, we see a decrease in crime all the way here, in this area. We now must ask ourselves why. I have a few reasons, active policing, stronger laws, harsher punishments, civilians taking security into their own hands, credit where credit is due. A large decrease in 2020-2021, this should hold true for any country where COVID lockdowns are implemented. This is due to government uh, action and should be recognized. The government appreciation is short-lived, if we give the benefit of the doubt and say every country saw an increase in crime post-COVID, we can look past the up crime trend in 2021-2022. However, we notice a larger increase in the year 2020-2023. So, COVID drop, post-COVID spike, post-COVID large spike. Why? So, uh, we have a few reasons. Static policing, resource scarcity, poor training, corruption, bribery, government inadequacy. Conclusion. South Africa, a country under siege, Based on the brief data exploratory analysis covered, there is still insufficient data to make an informative conclusion, excluding those that we have already covered. And that's it. See you in the next one.